What's up guys, Matty Wachlinski here, the consummate athlete, coming at you from the strength shop. Today, the strength shop's outside. We're making some sandbags today. A lot of you have been asking me um, for beginners. How do we get started training? What's some good ideas? What's some good options? Sandbags, very cheap, very versatile, really good option for you. So you can get started with that. There's already a bunch of how-to videos online. So, uh, and there's, there's many different ways to do it. This is not uh, a video of how many different ways you can do it. This is just how I do it. I prefer to make fixed weight sandbags. You could make uh, various um, variable size where you make a bunch of small filler bags with like Ziplocs and wrap it with duct tape and then and you can change and make them three to five pounds. I, fig I find they break a lot. I don't do it. So I just make uh, a, a few different uh, sizes. They're all fixed weight and I find that they don't break as easily. I get the most use with the less breaks by doing it this way. Another thing that's going to make this video a little bit different, I've been getting a lot of other questions, so while I'm making the sandbags, you'll see how I do it, and you'll also uh, get a couple questions answered. So there's about 14 questions I have I'm going to try my best to address, and uh, I'm going to do it in true Manny fashion. Here we go, sandbags. Sandbag 101. Went down to my local Army-Navy surplus store. I got five bags for 53 bucks. They had a sale going at a business sale, 30% off, so I got lucky. I got a, a 25 by 42, that's a pretty standard size. I have a big one, a 30 by 50. I'm probably not going to be filling this in today because uh, hmm, it's just really big and I, I have uh, not enough time to do that. I'm going to make that one about 200 pounds. The medium size one's going to be about 150. Oh, I only got four bags, sorry, maybe I dropped one somewhere. And then I have a smaller one, a lighter one. It's uh, 22 by 34. This is going to be lighter, so it's not nearly as, uh, it doesn't have to be as durable. It's, uh, what is this, durable cotton sea bag. And this one's kind of a, a different style. Maybe you can see what's going on there. So uh, I've got a couple different styles. Here we go. You're going to need tough, durable outer shell bags. Army Navy store has them. Go online. If you're resourceful, you can find them for free figure that out. Get a personality, talk to people, you'll get them for free. Strong, durable inner bags. When you go to Lowe's or Home Depot, they have this style. This is what you need, the really strong, I think it's uh, the three mil heavy duty bags, the contractor bags. Don't get the cheap stuff, they're gonna break on you really easy. Get the strong stuff. So you got the outer shell, you got the inner liners. You have the filler, you can use sand, gravel, mulch, rubber mulch, a combination of anything. You can fill it with uh, old rags, laundry, dead bodies, whatever whatever floats your boat. You know, fill that up and every single, you know, different filler you use is going to have a slightly different feel, a different mass. If you need a lighter bag that's still bigger, you need something lighter like the rubber mulch. If you need a very dense, heavy bag, sand is a great option. I prefer sand, that's what I'm using today, but you can use whatever you like. I don't think there's any better or worse, they're just better for a particular purpose. Depending on what size and weight bag you want, you're going to have to use the appropriate filler. So, you have your outer shell, your inner liners, your filler. I got scissors to make a few cuts and I have heavy duty Gorilla tape to uh, seal the thing shut. Here we go. Oh, might as well address a question first. Uh, somebody asked, can I do some mobility moves before I get started on my sandbag training? I got some. I got some for you. One of the things with mobility, a lot of people address their mobility for about five minutes, ten minutes before they begin their training, before their primary work. One of the best things you can do for your mobility, your general health and fitness and well-being is going to be always be moving, always be mobilizing. Um, all day long. Don't just do it for five minutes before your training. Get into it. Um, a couple minutes in the morning. I woke up this morning, I did some hip mobility and some shoulder mobility drills. Uh And then I'll do them several times throughout the day. A minute here, a minute there. More frequently, the more movement you do, the better you're going to feel, the better your body is going to respond. Not just five minutes before you work out three times a week. Do it several times for a minute, three, five minutes, several times a day.
So, like I said this morning, I did some. Uh, one quick thing, uh, I, I guess I'll just do one right now. I've got a band. If you don't have a band, you know, there's, there's other options, but here's one with a band. I'm going to get my uh, intracostal abdominatrix obliquus medialis contrarian muscles. So, I'm going to put it in your hand right here, strong band. If it's in my left hand, I'm going to put it down. I'm going to step on it with my right foot. Boom. Maybe you can see that. Let's see. I'm going to step on it right here. We'll pull that over. Now I'm just going to breathe. Focus on deep breathing and trying to reach back more and lock my ribs down. What you don't want, you don't want excessive arching in the back and get all this hyperextension. That's not good. You want to lock your ribs down. Focus on your breathing, and I can kind of twist, breathe, and you can see tons of uh, movement all through here. This static stretching is still good. Uh, this will help your front rack, you know, for your front squats, help your rack position, help your jerks, uh, open everything up all around. Focus on your breathing, lock down your ribs. Get out of there. About a minute or two each side. Locked in my hand really good. Put that down here. So up and over. I'll come up, I'll breathe. Organize my ribs. Breathe. I can come around here. Get that over under stretch and I'll work my hand up. Is really good. I'll just kind of hang out. I get my shoulder on this side with that internal rotation. I'll get my my ribs and abdominatrix on this side. Breathe. So that's a really good one with the band. Boom. Have some fun with that. Okay. Let's get started on some dealio here. We will make. We'll start with a 150. Bam. This is a 25 by 42 bag. Pull this bad boy open. How many fillers to use? How many uh, filler bags? Inner liner bags. I recommend you start with a minimum of three bags for up to 50 pounds. 50 pounds, three inner liners. Every 50 pounds above that, use one more liner. So for up to 50 pounds, you use three. From 50 to 100, use 4. From 100 to 155, 150 to 200 pound bags, use 6. So on and so forth. Do you have to do that? No. I mean, 3 might be sufficient. That's just what I do. Okay, so I'll use 3 or 4 for this 150. Alright, they got a bag. Bang. Open this guy. We're going to put 4 bags inside this guy. So we've got one right back there. better volume work or carrying a big ass fat heavy sandbag they're both better you have different different reasons for using each I kind of rotate my training one day I'll do a speed day and another day I'll do a heavy day one day I'll do an endurance day so on on your given day use a bag for that given purpose so as an athlete that's the, that's the main attributes we need. We need speed, we need strength, and we need endurance. So, use it wisely. 
to use it accordingly, okay? So, bag number four, get in there. Okay, so I got four bags. In, slide there. All right, pow. Four inner liners, inside and outer shell, and I'll fill that thing up with a buck fifty. machines in some gyms. If you're in a facility where you don't have neck machines, my favorite way by far is manual resistance. Get a partner. If you don't have a partner, get a personality and find a friend, in which case you'll have a partner. And uh, three main directions you want to use. You got yes, no, and maybe. And you'll get your partner. Maybe you'll get on your knees. You'll sit in a chair, throw a towel over your head. So you don't have somebody's dirty hands right on your sweaty face. And he'll provide resistance as you do yeses. Resistance this way and that way. He'll provide resistance as you do your nose. Now just try and hold your head. It, you know, he'll pr provide resistance to you as you go through your full range of motion. Always make sure you go through full range. Really try and reach that end range. That's when the majority of the injuries happen when you go all the way over. You don't want to spend all of it. Obviously, isometric training right in the middle, like if you just hold like a strong static position right in the middle, that's good too. But you really need to really get in that far end range because that's when the most uh, tragic accidents happen and neck, neck injuries in that, that extreme range of motion. So make sure you really work that and your, and your maybes, okay? So manual partner resistance is going to go far with your neck training. Ah, bag number two. Bag number three for one fitting. Cut the sandbag, make sure you don't cut your inner liner. It helps if you have a partner to hold the bag a little bit as you're doing this, but it's not totally necessary. Try and squeeze out as much air as you can. Oh, 
wrap that around the top. Use some strong tape, Gorilla tape. Strong duct, duct tape will be fine, but I like Gorilla tape. Be liberal with your application. Okay. You can cut that off or just stuff it in there. I'll just stuff it. And do the same for the outer bag. I cut this strap off. I don't want that getting in the way. Get rid of that. There's the handle. I cut that off too. You won't need it. You don't want it. Nuisance. my ass off out here. And then I just cut the rest off of here. Boom. All right. As I cut that off, I'll chill with this. Actually, let me answer a question. What's your biggest fear and how do you overcome it? Biggest fear? Man, that's a serious question. I would say my biggest fear is spiders. Those things are freaking creepy. Eight freaking legs crawling around. You don't know what they're gonna do. I mean, the agility on a spider. Imagine if you had eight legs, you know, you like crawling on the ceiling and shit. You'd be a badass athlete. I know that. Imagine a pit bull, a pit bull with eight legs. Just all, or just fucking running around with eight fucking legs, all kind of different directions. You know what kind of things a pit bull could eat with eight legs? That would be dangerous. Anyway, spiders, they're fucking creepy. How do you overcome them? Education. Education is how you overcome your fears. Spiders are beneficial for the ecosystem. They really are, true story. You realize, more spiders, less bugs bugging you, zipping around your face, getting in your food at a picnic. It's not good, you know? You want spiders, don't kill the spiders in your house, let them chill, they're just hanging out in the corner. In your sleep, they might jump in your mouth. It's fine, don't worry about it. You'll never know because you're sleeping. They're gonna get a lot of bugs for you, so it's kinda of like pros and cons. One spider in your mouth for every, you know, 50 bugs that they eat. It's cool, it's cool. Spiders are creepy. I overcame my fear because I realized how beneficial they are. And then uh, you're also gonna have little stupid things like public speaking and um, uh, fear of failure, fear of success, fear of talking to women, you know? You're gonna need, you need experience. You gotta put yourself, you kinda gotta jump in the deep end sometimes. And if you're afraid of public speaking, sometimes you just need to put a camera on and you gotta talk. And uh, you can just kinda get over it. And it's one of those things, every single time I look at myself doing these stupid videos, I'm like, you look like such a douchebag and you sound like an even bigger douchebag. But maybe someone's gonna benefit. So you look at the pros, somebody might benefit at the sake of you looking and feeling like a fool. Um, so, with experience comes, uh, you know, confidence, and, uh, and with that confidence you can kind of look forward into the future and you can predict other things that are going on. Experience, confidence, then you have uh, the ability to predict the future, what, what might happen, um, how to fix things before they go wrong, and that might come down to sales or uh, any kind of presentation, public speaking. Public speaking, I mean, 
that's that's definitely going to help your presentation. Try and sell yourself to a girl in a bar or something like that. If you're looking to get laid or find a new girlfriend, you know, a lot of people have a really hard time meeting new people. Nothing to talk about. You're going to get shot down a couple times. Buck up, little camper. Start talking to women and uh, do the thing that you're afraid of. And the more you do it, the more repetition you get, the more confidence you're going to gain, and the better you're going to feel about it. Until eventually, it's just not a problem at all. Fears, get over it. Come on, buddy. You can do it, guys. All right. So, that's essentially a sandbag. Some cleans, shoulders. Do some squats. Uh, having them all set on the side is great to really help uh, supplementary exercise for your barbell squats because it's it's all center, it's awkward. Literally help with some imbalances, lots of core strength. A 50 pounder or a light one. I'm going to make a 100 pounder in the middle, and ultimately, in a few days or whenever I need it, I'll make a 200 pounder. Let me go ahead and make these up. Same thing, you just use different weight, different bag. We'll come back with a few different exercises and answer a few more questions. Brett Barber wants to know why don't we see more cowbell? Well, Brett, I don't have a cowbell, but you know what I do have? A little more cowbell. I gotta have more cowbell. All right, we got another question. Is it better to not eat breakfast before a workout? To me, this is very personal to each individual. Some people do much better without eating breakfast. They claim to burn more fat on an empty stomach. Um, you have uh, you have products like uh, carb backloading that you know they and. Uh, warrior diet and things like that, renegade diet, they don't eat much food at all, if any, early in the day, maybe just some coffee, a lot of water, and then put the majority of their uh, feeding, inter intermittent, uh, intermittent feasting, fasting, feasting, it's basically what it is, intermittent fasting, it's like uh, almost starving yourself most of the day, feasting at night. Uh, Nate Miyake has a really cool product, Intermittent Feast. Uh, yeah, there, there, there's a whole bunch of stuff. So some people have a, you know, great results that way. Other, you know, bodybuilders, they say eat six to eight small meals a day. A lot of people don't have results with that. They eat, they, they don't, they end up just eating more and more calories, even though they claim to keep their metabolism higher, but they're still eating larger meals and overall they're eating more calories um, by eating, you know, many times a day. It's not necessarily smaller meals. They just eat the way they eat and it, you get a whole bunch more calories in there. And if you look at, some of the skinniest people in the world, they're not eating a lot, you know, they're, they're eating less. They're eating maybe one meal a day. So uh, I recommend, you know, you get over it and you, uh, you, you eat a little bit less, eat less frequently if you're trying to burn fat. Um, but every once in a while, every three, four, five days, you're going to blow it out. You're going to eat a lot and you're going to refeed. That's going to jack up, you know, your system. It's going to get your, uh, your, your energy higher, your metabolism up. Got a little raccoon over here. I want to, maybe want to see him. Let's see this raccoon. Can you see this guy? Maybe the zoom will work. What's up, raccoon? Where are you, little buddy? 
Can I see it? Look at this guy. Isn't he pretty? I like I like nature. This guy's just over here chilling, watching me make sandbags. Little does he know I will eat him or her. No, I won't. I won't eat him. He looks pretty. I like the wilderness. Pretty raccoon. Pretty. Is that a raccoon? Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. He's a good looking dude. Anyway, let's move on. I got more important things to do besides dealing with this raccoon. Okay? Oh boy. Wrong way. Alright. We got business to attend to. Damn raccoon screwing me up. So uh yeah, find out for yourself. Take a period of time, six weeks or so. Try intermittent fasting. Uh, try training on an empty stomach. See how you feel. Are you getting good results or are you getting bad results? If you're getting good results, stay with it. Tweak it a little bit. If you're getting bad results, if it's not for you, then it's not for you. But there's many people that get results doing either side. So I, I don't, it's not really my, you know, you know professional, uh, you know, field of uh, expertise there, the, the nutrition. I, I know, you know, uh, enough to, to get good results and what works for me and some other people, but it's always been experimentation for me. See what works best for you. Okay. Smaller bag, 50 pounds. If you're going to use a bag like this, a sport bag, don't make it too heavy and don't get too ballistic with it. You'll, you will rip it. If you need a very durable bag, get an expensive bag or, you know, uh, one that's made for the purpose from brute force or something like that um, may help. But these lighter bags, you're there for your beginner athletes, you know, you're not as strong athletes, or you're even afforded much more movement with the lighter bags that not available to you with heavier 100, 150 pound bags. So I have some, a lot of rotational work. Rose. Lots of variety there with a lighter bag. At what point do you start burning muscle instead of fat while doing cardio? At precisely 24 minutes and 37 seconds while doing cardio, you're going to start burning fat or start burning muscle and stop burning fat precisely that time. I don't fucking know, man. Here's the thing. If you want to burn fat, I don't recommend traditional cardio. I think that's decent for recovery workout time to time. Go for a, a long walk. Do that for recovery workouts in between heavy, heavy sessions. But cardio makes you more efficient. And to burn fat, you need inefficiency. You need heavy weight training. You need high intensity interval training. And that's going to be the most inefficient way to, to you know keep keep fuel you know in your body just like driving a car if you want to conserve your gas you drive for a consistent speed 50 miles an hour down the highway you want to burn as much gas as possible you drive to the city really fast stop really fast stop really fast stop that's like high intensity interval training you do a hard heavy set for 20 seconds chill for about 10 20 seconds go again repeat bam Tabata sets interval sets heavy weight training is going to have much more effective results for fat loss what do you do daily to keep in shape? Do you watch any of my videos? Um, you always move, you know, you, you do the best you can to eat the best you can most of the time. Every once in a while, blow it out, eat the things you love, whether it's cheesesteaks, pizza, ice cream, that stuff's gonna really jack up your energy levels from time to time and provide, you know, like a, a really big mix in the pot. I wouldn't do that, you know, too close to like a competition, but you know, whether it's bodybuilding or, or whatever, but eating clean, find out what eating clean is. Eating foods with only one ingredient, it's, it really starts with your nutrition, that's your foundation for your energy, uh, body composition, nutrition's key. So that's a lifestyle, what do you do daily? Treat your lifestyle with good nutrition, always be moving, you know, always do something. Um, when I'm sitting on my, when I'm working on my computer, I try to stand at the my, my countertop, my bar, my kitchen, and I'll stand and I'll do some stuff there instead of sitting down, hunching forward, doing the old Mr. Burns typing away on the computer. So I do a lot of my stuff standing instead of sitting. Um, 
and I exercise regularly, three to six days a week. Uh, I vary my intensity and I vary my goals. Sometimes I train for speed, sometimes I train for uh, strength, sometimes I train for endurance. And I have a system for how I, uh, I rotate those exercises and drills. And uh, if you're interested in learning more about that, it's all in the Consummate Athlete. You can check that out. Do you ever do body weight training only? In a given day, do I ever do strictly body weight? Yeah, I do it at least once a week, sometimes two or three days a week of just my body weight. That could include sprinting and push-ups and pull-ups. Uh, maybe I work on a skill like levers. I'll go to a park and I'll just work through my, uh, my, my skill work there and start with tuck levers, do a couple sets, and then warm my body up, then do flat tuck, work on some straddles, work on some negatives. Just pick, sometimes I just pick one thing and I'll just work the shit out of it for like a half hour to an hour. Um, muscle ups, whatever. And uh, other times I'll pick a couple things, like a, a dip variation, a jump, and maybe some sprints or something like that. Maybe I'll just work on handstands. I'll pick like a, one of my favorites. It's very simple, static, static holds, fundamental static positions, like just trying to hold a handstand Get like 20 minutes, put 20 minutes on the clock, and see how much time in 20 minutes the, the, the clock just goes, and how much time can you actually be in a handstand in that 20 minute period. If you know, if you look at these like uh, Chinese gymnastic teams, these guys, at the, like it's their finisher, they do a 45 minute handstand. Can you believe that? Just doing a handstand for 45 minutes, my eyes would explode. They would definitely kill me over there, I wouldn't be able to do that shit. What advice can you give to move better and be stronger? This guy's a new trainer. He connects with a few guys like myself, Elliot Holst, Paul Check, and he finds a lot of what's going on in the industry, the fitness industry, to be bullshit and incompatible with his personal beliefs. And uh, hey, man, best thing you can do is just be you. Do the things that you're passionate about. Believe in what you're doing. And when you express that passion, the people that are following you are going to believe what you say. Even if at times when you're wrong, if your energy and your passion is and your heart is in the right place, people are going to be more willing to follow you and do the things that you say. More so than the guy who's all nerded out and knows all the perfect, you know, textbook answers and all that. Passion. Passion trumps everything. If uh, you'll you'll learn more about uh, you know the right ways to say things, but as long as you're passionate and you're doing the right things to help people for the right reasons, people are going to follow you. They're going to want to do what you do. You